This is part 40 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss display, display name, display format, and scaffold column attributes. Please watch part 39 before proceeding. For the purposes of this demo, we'll be using this table TBL employee. I'll have the SQL script available on my blog in case if you need it. To represent each employee within this table TBL employee, we need an employee entity class. And to generate the employee entity class, we're going to make use of ADU.NET Entity Framework. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's right click on the models folder, add a new item, and let's select data under install templates, ADU.NET Entity Data Model, and let's name this sample data model. Click add, and we want our model to generate from the database. Click next. Let's name our connection string as sample db context. Click next. This is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views, and stored procedures. And our table name here is TBL employee. And we want our entities to live in models namespace. Let's click finish. So this should generate an entity with name TBL employee. But we want our entity to actually be named as employee so let's go ahead and change it accordingly save everything and let's build our solution and at this point let's go ahead and add home controller and let's select MVC controller with empty read write actions as the template click add and now we are interested in implementing details action method so we pass an employee ID. This method is going to retrieve the employee ID from the database. And then it's going to pass that employee object to the view. And you know this auto-generated entity class file is going to have our employee entity class. Notice that this employee class is actually implemented as a partial class. And notice the namespace. It's present in MVC demo.models. And since we want to use our employee class within the home controller, let's go ahead and include this namespace in the home controller. And let's create an instance of our sample db context class. And this class has got employees property, which is going to return the list of employees back, out of which we want a single employee, where the ID of the employee must be equal to whatever ID that we are passing into this details action method. And that's going to retrieve a single employee, which we are storing in this object. And then we will hand this object to the view. The next step is to actually add the details view. So let's right click on the details action method, add view. The name of the view is going to be details. We're going to make use of Razor View Engine. And we're going to create a strongly typed view against employee models class. and the scaffold template is going to be details. So this should add details view. And to set ADLS our font family, let's use a div tag here and specify the style attribute. And let's font family as area. All right, with all these changes, let's build the solution. Let's run this and navigate to details action and let's navigate to employee one okay so you know obviously here this view is not that pretty first of all look at the property name here full name we don't have a space between full and name let's say we want you know that property on the UI to be displayed like this with a space in between full and name how do we achieve that we can make use of this display attribute and now we need to apply these attributes to the properties of the employee class. But this employee class that is present in the sample data model.designer.cs, this is auto-generated file. So obviously, if we make any customizations to this file, there's a disadvantage because anytime this class is auto-generated again, we're going to lose all those customizations. That's why it's not a good practice to make any customizations to this auto-generated class. Because this class is implemented as a partial class, we can have another employee partial class, and then we can apply all our customizations there. So to our models folder, I'm going to add another class file. And I'm going to call this employee.cs. And this is the class which is going to contain all our customizations. So this is going to be another partial class. And then I'm going to create another class here. 
public class and I'm going to call this employee metadata. So this class is actually going to contain the metadata related to the employee class. And then to associate this employee metadata class with employee partial class, I'm going to use metadata type attribute and that attribute is present in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace. So now let's go ahead and use metadata type attribute and then specify that this class is going to contain the metadata for employee class. All right. So now we want to have a space, you know, on the full name property. So public string, the name of the property is full name. And let's have the get and set accessors. And now we are going to use that display attribute. So display attribute and that this has a property, na a named property, which is nothing but the name, and then you can specify whatever name you want. So I'm going to specify full name with a space in that. Let's build the solution, let's refresh this view, and we should get a space between full and name there. So look at that. And if you notice the way we have used this display attribute, look at this. You can either use the full name of the attribute, which is display attribute, or simply use display. Okay, we're going to have the same effect. And instead of using display attribute, there is another attribute to achieve the same thing. We can use display name attribute as well. The only difference between these two is that here we are using a named parameter, but whereas here we are passing the parameter, you know, you know, with the here we are not using a named parameter. It's as simple as that. All right. Now another interesting, you know, attribute that can be used, you know, to control the display is display format attribute. Okay. So if you look at higher date right here, look at that. We have date and time. Let's say instead of displaying date and time, we just want to display date. Then we can use display format attribute and specify our data format string. And notice that we are using the data format string as 0 colon day, d for short date string. That's only the date part of date time. Again, display format can either be used like this, or, can you, or you can use the full name of the attribute. We'll have the same output. On the other hand, if you want a date and time, okay, here the time is in 24 hour notation, then you can use the data format string. Notice that 0 colon, you're specifying ddmm. Y, Y, Y. And since we are using capital H here for hours, you know, we are going to get uh, time in 24 hour notation. On the other hand, if you want time in 12 hour notation with AM and PM, you can use, you know, small case H there and TT. So all these customizations are possible using this display format attribute. Let's quickly look at that in action. So the type here is date time, and this is a nullable date time, and the name of the property is higher date. And we want to use display format attribute and specify data format string. Again, this is specified as a named parameter. And let's specify our data format string as 0 colon d. Let's build this. Let's navigate to the view. Look at that. At the moment, we have date and time, but we only want date part. So let's refresh this. So here, notice that we only get the date part. Now, if you navigate to employee 2 here, Notice that for employee 2, Mary Jane, we don't have gender specified that's stored as null. And then on the UI, instead of displaying null, let's say, you know, if for an employee gender is not specified, then I want to display gender not specified instead of the empty string there. How can we achieve that? Again, we can make use of display display format attribute. And there is another parameter called null display text, where you can specify the text for any null value. Now here, since the property is gender, I am specifying the null display text as gender not specified. In this case, it's going to display that if the gender of the employee is null. 
so public string gender and let's use display format attribute and the parameter is null display text and then we can say gender not specified so let's build this so at the moment Mary Jane since she doesn't have gender you know no value is displayed there but now when we refresh this as you might expect instead of the empty string it should show gender not specified right another very useful attribute is scaffold column attribute okay now if you don't want to display a column then we can make use of scaffold column attribute let's say salary is confidential information at the moment notice that salary information is displayed but for some reason we don't want salary column to be displayed in the view then you can control that using scaffold column attribute all you need to specify is um, you know pass false as the um, value for this attribute and it's not going to show that column but however this attribute is going to only work when you use display for model HTML helper at the moment if you look at the way this details view is implemented this is an auto generated view for us okay now notice that first of all it didn't generate you know a div tag for displaying ID so we don't have ID there but it has generated you know a div tag for salary so that's the reason why we see salary there now if we apply the scaffold column attribute if we apply this attribute to this employee class it's not going to work okay because let's actually look at that so public and salary and let's specify the scaffold column attribute and then pass false so we don't want to scaffold the column let's build the solution let's go back refresh this notice that at the moment we have salary displayed but even after refreshing the view we still have salary specified but we have used the scaffold column attribute okay so why is the salary being stole, uh, still being displayed that's because the scaffold column attribute will only work when you use display for model HTML helper okay so instead of all this HTML that we have right here I can get the same output using just one line display for model using HTML helper so add HTML dot display for model HTML helper so this helper is going to go through each property and then it's going to render the UI for us automatically so let's re um, build this let's go back to the view and let's refresh this and look at that salary is not displayed now but then ID is displayed again okay um, you know if you remember the previous with the previous implementation of this view we didn't have this problem because the auto generated view it didn't generate a div tag for ID so it didn't display that but this display for model you know is displaying ID there let's say we don't want the ID also to be displayed all we need to do is have um, you know ID property and specify scaffold column attribute on that property as well all right, in our next video, we'll discuss data type and display column attributes. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.